No need to look as far as Russian troll farms for disinformation and smear campaigns. Too often, it starts at the local schoolyard and ends with tragic consequences. The French are grappling with yet another teen suicide at the start of this school year. Marion, 13, Marion, 13 years old. Evel, 11. Dina, 14. Ombre, 11. Luca, 13 years old. Thibault, 10. Chanel, 12. Marie, 15. Lindsay, 13. Nicola, 15 years old. These names are children taken from their families. They are pupils taken from their teachers. They are young people taken from their country by the scourge that is bullying at school. The emotion palpable on Tuesday at the French National Assembly. Now, bullying and hazing are as old as humanity, but to many, it feels like there's a post-pandemic epidemic of it. Perception or reality? What's being done about it will review new measures unveiled by the government and shock moves like the deployment last week of police to a Paris area classroom to cuff a suspected teen offender. We'll also ask how educators and authorities are coping elsewhere in a world where the bullying is now broadcast at the speed of light over social media. What should regulators do to stop the publication of poison? How do pupils themselves cope between the digital world and its real life consequences? Today in the France 24 debate, we're looking at school bullying gone viral. Joining us from London, Philippe Goen, founder of the French support and advocacy group Respect Zone, which battles cyberbullying in particular. Thanks for joining us. Uh, from Geneva, Zoe Moody, professor at the University of Geneva's Center for Children's Rights Studies. Welcome to the show. Thank okay. you. Gabrielle Latanzio is a former teacher in a Paris area public high school. Welcome back. Cheers. Good to be here. Good conversation to have. And uh, Louis Victor de Franceux, co founder and CEO of content moderation providers, uh, Trem how do you pronounce it? Tremo? Tremo. Tremo. There Tremo. We go. The French word with an English touch. Okay. Thank you very much for having us tonight. <laughs> All right. The France 24 debate, where you can join the conversation you have on Facebook and Twitter, hashtag F24 debate. If this was already a back to school hot topic uh, issue uh, during the summer. And then when the first week of classes began, 15 year old Nicolas taking his own life. First Lady Brigitte Macron making the trip to the Paris suburb of Poissy at the time to meet family and officials. Nicolas's parents had lodged a formal complaint with uh, the vocational high school where he, that he attended last December after he had suffered repeated bullying. It was serious, especially as the child, from what I've heard, had already told the school with his parents. It's very, very serious because it could have been avoided if he had been taken more seriously. That really did uh, send shockwaves, uh, Gabriel Latanzio. And it, 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 was, it came after a summer where we, we had discussed teenage suicides due right. to bullying. And I think it's exactly when it happens that we should act. This remind me of a situation in the United States uh, in the late uh, 2000s. There was a, a wave of uh, gay teen suicide. And at that time, a, a famous uh, American columnist called Dan Savage started a campaign called It Gets Better. And it was just a message of him and his, uh, well, soon to be husband saying, look, it might be difficult when you're a teenager, but hold on and you'll find friends and allies later on. So this was pure prevention, but still, my point is when something horrific happens, some sometimes argue that we should be careful not to be uh, too active. Maybe the family wouldn't want that, believe me. I think these families do want action. So we should talk about it, we should do more. And I'm excited to criticize and assess just how good these measures are. Yeah, Philippe Cohen, uh, there was a cutaway when we were watching uh, the uh education minister in parliament Tuesday to uh, one member of parliament who said she was bullied at school 40 years ago and still bears the scars. Yeah, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't go away, uh, which is why you know, we, 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 we do salute and bow to the measures that have been announced by the government. We are trying to, <laughs> to, to root for these kind of measures over the last 10 years, so it's never too late. 
we still believe that there is some room for uh, better education as opposed to sanction. Repression is useful. But uh, what about uh, trying to, you know, to, to find new ways to resolve issues, especially online? And uh, if we have time, uh, Francois, I think it would be good to speak also about uh, other ideas like mediation, conciliation, trying to, to, to work between peers to resolve problems. Well, you had the, the prime minister standing alongside uh, several of her top cabinet members, not just the education minister, the health minister, the digital affairs minister. Um, and yet uh, uh, it was more stick than carrot. Let's take a listen to Elisabeth Bond. To ensure that nothing is overlooked, all reports of bullying will now be referred to the public prosecutor, thanks in part to a dedicated platform between the education system and the justice system. I also want to see legal complaints systematically referred to the public prosecutor. Uh, Zoe Moody, your reaction? Well, um, given the uh, very serious and long-term psychosocial consequences of bullying, I can only welcome the will to put the fight against it at the top of the priorities. And the plan presented is holistic in scope, um, uniting all forces of all actors of the education system in the same direction. So um, this is one way of making sure it, uh, it can work. Um, it also combines actions already in place and prevention uh, which is also a very positive sign. However, uh, I agree with uh, Mr. Cohen and uh, some of the repressive words um, which have been mentioned uh, worried me to some extent because of um, the because we know research has shown that repression is not the most effective direction when it comes to bullying. Yeah, last week uh, there was a controversy here. Uh, police interrupting class in the eastern Paris suburb of Alfortville to handcuff a 14-year-old boy accused of harassing and threatening a transgender 15-year-old over Instagram. Uh, the opposition questioned the theatrics of uh, bursting in the government defending itself. I won't go over the details, but you get it. This is how we'll break the scourge that is bullying. It's also how we'll protect our children by sending very strong messages. Yeah, that, that, that went in for a lot of criticism. However, Louis-Victor de Francu, uh, um, people who have been the victims of uh, bullying say sometimes you need some kind of a strong message sent. I don't know. I'm, I'm no expert, I'd say, on, on, that, on that particular field. But what, I, what we do see is that with the advent of new technology of social media, the um, border between offline and off and online is has completely blurred it has mm -hmm. close to disappeared so in i'd say in the olden days it's not that long ago right but you know if you were bullied at school there was maybe you had refuge at home or you could see f out other friends outside of school here that frontier doesn't exist anymore you're always victim or you're always uh, um, exposed to the type of content philippe cohen you you, you mentioned the call your call for mediation there what's interesting is that uh, educators say their biggest problem is you can do mediation if uh, the two pupils are in the same school, but with cyberbullying, lots of times uh, they, they have no right or jurisdiction o over pupils who don't go to the same school at all, who might not even be in the same city. No, so this is why we have proposed an amendment to the Loi Barro, which is the uh, digital law to um, implement the Digital Services Act, the DSA in France. Um, we have digital tried... Services Act, just to remind our viewers, which is uh, Europe-wide. Yeah, so, so, so which is, uh, I mean, our proposal, which is part of three proposals to amend this uh, implementation law of the DSA, is uh, quite simple. It just says that if you feel offended, uh, each social media must, must, must have an obligation to to care for an uh, automatized way to have a 70 hours max mediation process. Meaning, that I feel offended. Uh, I am a minor. Uh, maybe I am, you know, beyond 18. But let's keep the, you know, the, the uh, cyber bullying for kids, uh, which is what we are talking about to today, and having this ability and this 
device to say, I want to mediate, I want to, to obtain the consent of my offender, my perpetrator, uh, either to pull out the content, which is offending to me, or tone it down, or explain it. And having this option, which is mediation, ADR, alternative dispute resolution, has never been put in place, ever, nowhere. Uh, have you beta approach, tested it? I mean, this is why we have been selected by the Side Online Safety Lab, which has been gathered by the Paris Peace Forum. Uh, and we are willing to test it. So we have launched questionnaires, survey, and there is a real appetite and call to find preliminary ways to remedy and repair before going to court, before calling the police, before handcuffing students. Uh, because most of the time when you are, you are being asked, you know, as a second thought, but do you really want to keep it online, this offensive post? Do you really want to mean what you meant? Uh, we know we have not made any scientific measure, but we know that there is a high appetite to say, oh, maybe I should take it out with the consent of the perpetrator. You know, this is what we call mediation, digital mediation. And we have other ideas if we have time to, to address them here. Yeah, social media, emotion, outrage, those are the business model. I mean, you, that's what keeps you staying on those platforms. Is, it, is what Philippe Cohen, does it sound realistic? Is it plausible? So I think it is. And I think that, you know, some of the um, advantages of, or, um, of the Digital Services Act, and we'll see it, it is a really unique type of regulation that is really going to change the way, not just the very large online platforms, but also all the medium-sized online platforms have to operate, you know, obliging not only the remediation uh, and dispute resolution mechanisms, which is embedded also in, in the Digital Services Act, but also have trusted flag organizations that will need to um, help and support the victims. So, for example, in France, you have uh, E-Enfance, which is a, a, what is called a helpline. Um, E-Enfance will most probably I don't know the intentions of the regulator, but I would imagine at least become a trusted flagger under the Digital Services Act. And so the platforms will be on, under the legal obligation of responding under a certain deadline to the trusted flag organization, providing an explanation to whether or not they, why they removed the content or why they did not remove the content. And that trusted flagger also has to publish transparency reports. So actually holding the platform accountable by saying, okay, I sent, you know, 100 messages or 100 times content to Meta and Meta only have responded 20% of the time. Mm -hmm. And so that is actually going to create, you know, a, um, a kind of a triangle of accountability bef between different stakeholders within this ecosystem, which I think is very healthy and, and is a great step forward to try and... And when is out. this happening? So the Digital Services Act has gone live uh, for the very large online platforms since um, August, the 25th of August uh, of this year, and for all online platforms starting on the 17th of February 2024 of next year, so just in, in five months' time. Now, the regulators still have a couple of months before naming the trusted flaggers, so that need, will need to be done before the 17th of February of next year. So in other words, not till next February at the earliest. Uh, Gabriel Attenzio, uh, let, let's contrast this idea of putting a some kind of mediation tools on social mm. media uh, versus what the government announced today. One of the measures they discussed was uh, confiscating or phones for, um, for certain pupils who, who have found to bullied. Hey, why not? Look, uh, if is, that, I, is, is it doable? Did you confiscate phones in your classroom? No, I have not. We don't have the right to, actually. It's their property. I'm not touching their property. I know that when you teach young kids... Even if they're texting whatever during class? Kick them out. <laughs> That's all you can do. Just take them out of the classroom. And it just means moving the problem away from the classroom. Look, the conversation here is, is incredibly important. We can talk about the how. I hope we can also talk about the how much. But here's something I really want to add to this question is where we fail is in, in framing the issue. I think when we talk about bullying, we have this representation of pardon the expression, we're, we're thinking of nerds who suffer from hostility, for instance, or others. And then we can talk about gang fights and the violence that teenage boys, especially boys, can, can engage in. And, and my belief, and that's my direct experience, because where I taught, we had three homicides committed by students that we were in charge of, not during the class exactly, just for one, outside the PE class. My lesson that I took from these three 
tragedies is that there's a continuum between different forms of teenage antisocial behavior. And if we're saying there's bullying on one side and then uh, neighborhood gang fights on the other, we are wrong. The real question we need to address is how come small monsters become big monsters? And, and that is our responsibility because an eight-year-old, a 12-year-old does not have that sole responsibility as to who he becomes. Each and every one of those violent kids are our responsibility, all of us. And what we do need to know is find ways, not just to teach them the values of empathy, that's not too bad, but we can do better. We can help them be responsible. And that means telling them a little bit of our common fate is in your hands, you be good, and we'll all be for the best, do, do for the best. So uh, this conversation is incredibly important. My sole point is let's not think of bullying as removed from the rest. Yeah, not removed from the rest. We see the profile of those who've committed suicide. It's boys right. and girls. Right. Uh, and, uh, uh, it's, uh, and it's for all sorts of reasons. Fair enough. Uh, usually when you look at the, the uh, psychology literature on the matter, when it comes to teenage aggression, uh, a, a common idea, uh, Maurice Berger, others, they would say that teenage boys direct their aggression towards others. We certainly see it. And they would say that sometimes uh, uneasiness among young women would turn to the, against themselves. And, and, and we do see it. They don't go as far as boys do. But when it comes to say, and I think, again, it's the same topic. It's mental health among kids. When you think of young women who stop eating, when you think of young women who are obsessed with appearance in some way, it is all part of the same question, which is, are we making them hopeful? Do, do we make them realize that, to some extent, not a great extent, they have a little bit of faith to have in the future and how much they can accomplish? Zoe Moody, your thoughts on this? Well, um, it, it is. Um, <laughs> I, I, I would agree with the fact that um, uh, lessons on empathy are a very good start, and we do have some data showing that um, uh, teaching from a very young age uh, um, students to recognize their own emotions um, uh, and then recognize those of their peers are crucial. But what I like with the um, uh, idea that is suggested here of responsibility is that we relate this to human rights and more and more um, when looking at what works um, to prevent and to act uh, when it comes to bullying is not the moral um, uh, discourse that telling children it's no good, but telling them you have the right to be respected and your peers have the right to be respected and, and getting the discourse back on, on the level of, of, of the children and human rights and of dignity. So I think that um, this idea um, of, we were talking about um, uh, confiscation of, uh, of phones, I think this is maybe a bit of a, um, uh, an extreme case and I hope it, it's only uh, expected to be used in very extreme cases. But um, uh, I, I do agree that sanction and sanction in education has also been uh, studied as, as, as recognizing the responsibility of uh, students. Re recognize the responsibility of students. And Zoe, by the way, it's not just France. Recent opinion polls show soaring numbers of students um, uh, after the pandemic who've claimed that they've been subject to harassment. Uh, Axios published a study, uh, I don't know how scientific it is, saying as many as 40%, now this is a little older, on college campuses, university campuses uh, this year, 40% uh, do 40% of college campus students, Zoe Moody, does that seem realistic that they feel as though uh, they are the subject of harassment? Well, um, figures figures vary a lot depending on how you um, measure them. So um, I, I, I won't focus on the 40 percent. But what what is important is that um, school bullying uh, will affect victims. And the, the victims, there are some studies showing up to 50% of victims. So, I mean, um, going beyond those figures, it also affects, and in the long term, and we have loads of studies showing this also, uh, the um, bullies, the perpetrators, and, um, and in a very large um, way as well, it affects the witnesses, the bystanders. And uh, some studies have shown up to 87% of students um, just being scared, not feeling safe in school because of bullying. So I think it's, it's, it's really more about... Um, Is it worse than real... before? 
Um, well, uh, we speak about it a lot more, so it is um, quite um, normal to get the feeling that it's worse than before. I, I don't know if it's um, worse. Um, it is what is what is good in some some way is that we know what it is and we know what the consequences are and we know more and more what to do about it. So the, the, the figures look more or less um, st stable over the years, um, but prevention does have an effect. And so this is important to keep in mind. Um, and we also um, know that when we do something, the consequences tend to be less um, serious for both victims um, and, and bodies uh, in the long term. So just the fact to act, the fact to be uh, supportive can already have a, an effect, a positive effect. Yeah, Zoe, I just want to tell you, you're, you're on a panel with four uh, men who've all been scarred by the French education system. Uh, it's uh, where, you know, in the classroom, we all had teachers who liked to humiliate the kids. And uh, Philippe Cohen, uh, when Zoe Moody is, is talking about this change of attitude, it really, to a French person, it can sound like mission impossible, getting teachers to perhaps uh, view pupils in a way where they aren't shamed. There is no mission impossible in education. I, I'm, I'm uh, uh, you know, absolutely uh, uh, on the optimist uh, side of the of the river. This is why I founded uh, this Respect Zone uh, initiative. We have we have been been able to to label, as we call it, uh, meaning to to enter into programs and to affix the label of Respect Zone, which does correspond to a specific charter which is co-built with the students in dozens of schools and sports centers and uh, social centers and uh, association in France and in Belgium. And this is also another way to evangelize and to propagate uh, the notion of respect. And I really liked what was said just before in terms of uh, nurturing and nourishing the, the, the sense of hope and positiveness as well. We have not talked at, at all about uh, the education of the educators, the education and the prevention um, uh, resources that needs to be allocated to uh, educate also parents, because it's very difficult to take uh, the, the, the kids and the scholars in uh, isolation of the rest of their uh, family environment. Uh, we, know, we, have, we have worked a lot on how to educate parents at the same time as educating the kids. You have mentioned the uh, uh, plans that have been released by Ministry of Education, Gabriel Attal, uh, with a confiscation, which are kind of symbolical uh, sanctions, the uh, brigade, anti-bullying brigade. Uh, 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 of course, this is very useful, but, but the point is, 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 is also to try to to create this culture of respect all across the life of the kids. All right, let, let, and, let's talk. And, let's talk about that because uh, you, uh, you, you, I know Gabriel Attanzio poured cold water on the concept, but let's take a look at this more di deeply. The French education minister last week he goes to Denmark, which in its bid to fight bullying, put empathy on the curriculum. Karis Garland has that story. In Kindness on the curriculum. While the teachers tell the class a story, these Danish primary school students trace it out on their classmates' backs. The fluffy bear wanted very much to go to Denmark and quickly packed his bags. This exercise is part of empathy class, which is mandatory for all students from the ages of 6 up until 16. The aim is to develop the children's social skills and sense of class cohesion. It lets children get closer to each other. It's so they're not afraid to hug a classmate if they feel sad. These lessons on empathy and emotional intelligence teach children how to be good classmates in the hopes of preventing school bullying. Hi, dear. The parents are also given guidelines to make sure no child gets left out and to discourage exclusionary cliques. Families take the rules to heart. 
Okay, if you're a girl, you can choose either to invite the whole class uh, for a birthday party, or you can also choose uh, to invite uh, the girls only. But you cannot pick and choose. The school has this focus also on the parents. Hey, remember, don't, don't talk bad about the kids or the parents. When this mother questions her children on what they would do if they witness bullying at school, the girls are firm. I would say stop and I would help. And if that doesn't work, we'll go and get an adult. Empathy classes are starting to make their way to other countries like France. A teacher from Paris is observing this session with Danish children. We have to comfort him and tell him that he can play with the others. We try to make sure that the children are happy in the group, and if we keep an eye on this, we can nip bullying in the bud. We can learn these lifelong lessons very early on. Denmark has one of the lowest rates of bullying in Europe, with just 5% of 11-year-olds saying they'd been picked on in the past two months. Gabriel Tanzio. I'll, I'll say something that is a very uncomfortable truth. Uh, when I was so now I'm teaching uni, but back then I was teaching high school. I would have 200 students. I am not capable of doing anything in my life 200 times and succeed 200 times. Could be free throws, anything. I cannot succeed 200 times. So you know why? Because in my classes, I would have 34 kids, each with different contexts, with different emotions and different needs, and I have to address them all at the same time and try to fill, you know, whatever void is in their soul. And that is not achievable in that context. So I've said before, we need to talk about the how much. These images you show, please make it happen. I was looking for one thing today, a number. <coughs> Give me one. I do have one. The only number that the government communicated today was that very likely next year we'll have 2,500 teachers less. That makes me beyond mad. I see these pictures. The key aspect is you build a positive personal relationship with kids who depend on you. I've been a student. I know we look at teachers and we think they can do it all. They can succeed at everything. No, we're not. I fail. Sometimes, I don't know, not the case now, but my girlfriend left me the day before. I might be heartbroken. My mother might be sick. Sometimes I fail. And these words will be remembered forever by you, me as well, others. So teachers will fail. They will keep failing, especially, especially if we keep putting our money into retired people's pensions rather than in kids. And this is exactly what we're doing in France. All right, but the, the at least putting forth this idea of a, a time each week for little ones and not so little ones sure. to sit down. We've talked about it before when talking about um, uh, how to better manage social media, how to fish right. out disinformation. Well, why not civics? Why I'll, not? I'll tell you why, Francois, because there are only so many jobs I can do. I think my colleagues there, and especially those who are in charge of six to 11 year olds, they have to be a teacher, friend-ish, you know, let's say warm. They have to be psychologists. Later on, my role was to help them find a job. Then we have to fulfill so many roles, including fighting radical religions as well. So when does it end? We can't do it all. Find specialists, make them come. And it's not just going to be prevention. It's not just finding the right word. It's activities that kids can do with more than just teachers. Philippe Cohen, uh, is your optimism dented? It will not, uh, Francois. <laughs> there is no way, especially after hearing uh, Gabriel, Zoe, and uh, and your other um, uh, guest. Um, two two points. One is uh, that uh, I, I really love when Zoe talked about the uh, education of the by bystanders and what you have uh, depicted in Denmark does show that there is there is a way. Uh, about empathy, education, so that the bystander... But, but Gabriel's, would not be Gabriel's angry because he sees 10 kids in that classroom and he had to deal with 34. Yeah, but uh, and, 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 and which, which does show that uh, uh, the experimentation pays. Uh, what I would also want to mention about these measures that have been um, enacted by, by the government is that, uh, as we say, they are, they are very much focusing on repressing the kids we uh we know that kids are very smart and each time we create uh, a sanction like confiscation of your telephone or the digital curfew 
that you have seen curfews that, that can be imposed between 6 p.m. until 8 p.m. not to access for a kid that has been condemned as a pre-sanctioned by a judge access to social media. It's so easy these days to circumvent this type of measures that it's, it's almost... Uh, uh, you know, uh, like a, like a joke in a way, especially for a, for a kid, because it, it 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 may also appear as being the new challenge, which is which is going to be how can I overcome this uh, you know uh, mood uh, sanction, um, education mediation. Also, we have a sort of with respect on to uh, to 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 impose uh, some sort of uh, in, internship or training for the people who have been suspended their account, which is part of the DSA implementation in France, you, you can be suspended your account up to six months. And we say, why don't we uh, you know, uh, copy what has been done for driving license when you are being you know, suspended your driving license? You have to go to school and to relearn how to drive. Why don't we also try to, to use this type of... Uh, uh, license, driving license approach to uh, education on, on uh, against bullying. And who uh, pays and for that? Excuse me. Who who's who would have to pay for that? Oh, uh, if 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 you are condemned, uh, you know, same for your driving license, you have to pay for your internship. Uh, mm. If you are condemned, you have to to be accountable for your condemnation. And this is ex exactly one of the three measures that we have. Uh, 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 upheld with the uh, support of a uh, member of parliament. Uh, these three projects are being on their way to, to be voted. It will be uh, a complex journey to make them vote, but we are very, very convinced. And the, the third one is, is also something we didn't talk about, about social media. Is, uh, we, we want and we proposed uh, in one of the amendments of the Barrow uh, Bill uh, to have um, an obligation offered by each social media to give a free access to legal and psychological assistance. Uh, because it's, you know, we are using social media. We know about their toxicity, but there is no, you know, pills that can remedy about, you know, can I call some support? Some kind of help, like a gambling hotline for those who do sports betting is, is, is what you're suggesting Correct. there. Uh, Louis-Victor de, de Franceau, um, th th this idea that uh, is, is put forth uh, by Philippe Cohen of a driver's ed for, for those who've had their, their social media accounts suspended. Again, you're, you're faced with uh, a tech industry that says it's not our job. Uh, well, yes and no. I mean, the tech industry is realizing more and more that they have a duty of care, right? And it's actually in the digital service sector. So they have a duty of care. And also it hurts the business line, you know, the bottom line of the business at the end of the day. Because if, you know, you, their users get harassed online, then they're going to stop showing up on that platform. And so that's bad for their revenue. What do you think about what they've done in China, where they've basically just banned... <laughs> Uh, going on, they're only on one hour a day of TikTok, yes, no, and they're um, banned from from the kids are banned from using it. I, I I wouldn't take that route. I don't think it's it's probably because in, no, we we shouldn't forget that internet is also a way of learning. It's also a way of expressing oneself. It's also a way of discovering different sure. cultures, different aspects of life. I think one thing that was said uh, by Philippe just before, which I uh, agree on many points, and. But I think we need to go a bit further, which is also about empowering the, em, empowering the children, empowering the victims themselves. How do you because, do that? For example, we know that um, the We Protect Global Alliance did a study, and they said that 85% of uh, bullying or harassment uh, uh, events were happening yeah. through a phone, so through our apps, through our social media apps. We think on computers. So all our laws are designed to having the right button at the right place, but it doesn't work, mm. right? Ian France, I thought, did something that was very innovative at the, at the time, which was um, they created an app so you can report through an app saying, mm. okay, this is the link. I can go on an app on my phone and report. And I think we really need to go back to what is the usage of the internet? What is the usage of social media by the young generation, the children that are the, potentially the victim? And how can you empower them? How can you give them the tools to also protect themselves. And, and I think that's... And, and the internet, let's face it, and social media, they're not built for children because children are not... Uh, cons they're not the ones who are buying the products mostly. I... It, again, it depends which social network. 
I mean, if you know, if you're on a pornographic site, because technically there is, you know, it's an online platform in the same way that the, it's definitely not made for children. If you're on Ubo or other types of so, social media which are designed for children, so first of all, you have we always forget that there's a very r big range of, of social media. Uh, second, I remember when you know Facebook came out. Uh, I don't know whatever year I was. You know, we were very excited. You know, I was young and definitely underage to, to go, but we still went. So it's also about how do you make sure that you, you said this, um, and I think it's very true, children will always find a way ar around. Right? If you sure. put a measure, they'll find a way. If you, take a, if you tell a child you're not allowed to go you know, on your social media between this hour and that hour, well, you know, I would have found a way probably to, to have a second account or, or whatever. So I think it's, mm. we really need to think of it with, it, with a holistic approach, mm. and we need to um, find systemic measures. Now, and, and one other thing around the new regulations, which I think will be very powerful, and again, speaking about the European Regulation and Digital Services Act, is we've now imposed on the biggest platform to do systemic risks assessments. A bit like we ask the financial sector now to do systemic risk assessments around, you know, potential financial crisis. What, self-policing? So basically they need to go in and they need to analyze, they have a, a list of risks and one of them is uh, protection of minors online. And they need to assess how does the usage of that service expose. That, hmm. uh, yeah, but that is then audited by a third party. So that's going to be audited by a KPMG, PWC, or whoever. Sure. That is then going to be audited, and the regulator will have access to the full report. And it's a first step in the right direction. And it's not going to be solved tomorrow morning, but it's a, it's a process in which we are little by little also making a lot of these platforms safer and making sure that the usage of these platforms are safer. François, maybe part of the solution is not just what we tell kids not to do, it's also the space we as adults occupy. Uh, when it comes to what happens online, I think each and every high school in France should have an app where you can talk to people, say something happened to me, etc. and so on. Many kids don't want to talk because talking is difficult. If they could just contact us and do something on their cell phone, the yeah. cell phone could become the so, tool Zoe, in favor of something. Zoe Moody, what, what, what's, uh, how, how does it look worldwide when it comes to that idea that has been put forth by Gabrielle? Well, uh, definitely, the, the, the uses of um, technologies by uh, children and youth um, are specific to some extent, and so we need to uh, develop more knowledge uh, uh, about that. Um, and the idea of having um, apps that allow um, children to get in touch with um, sometimes even just a chatbot, because um, what we've noticed uh, with, within our research is that sometimes young people are more comfortable uh, if they know it's a robot mm. interacting with them and just helping mm. them to uh, understand whether what they feel is uh, legitimate and that after that it allows them to go and get some help uh, i don't know if there's a helpline on the on the this app so there are some um uh, there are some pilot projects so we are conducting one in switzerland at the moment um and so uh, it, it really looks as if uh, this would be one way also um because it, it goes two ways, actually. It, it supports the, the, the young people, but it also supports the schools in monitoring what's, uh, what's going on, um, having an idea of um, how many uh, children connected to the app, how many uh, then clicked on the, on, on, on the, on the phone number, and, and, and all that gives some information about what's happening in the school. What about the parents? Uh, because a lot of times, uh, uh, the parents of uh, kids who bully I don't want to hear about it. Well, um, actually, I think we find as many parents as, as you find uh, children, you know. Uh, so, act, yeah, there, there are some parents for whom it is difficult to um, understand uh, what's going on with their children. And to some extent, we can understand because bullying is also about group dynamics. It's not only it, – it, it's not – um, always an individual and so it's, it's very possible that some parents won't um, recognize their uh, young um, child with with what is being said and what is being done especially in a place where anonymity or just mediation the fact that that the person is far away uh, um, um, on a virtual space uh, will allow them to do things that they would have never done in the real life uh, but on the other hand we have on the other hand, we have parents who are very um, um, willing to understand what's going on and to um, uh, try to find some information. So uh, part of um, the, the data we have also collected in, in our participatory uh, uh, pilot projects trying to design uh, apps or um, uh, 
tech products uh, um, uh, with the users is that the parents would also like a place to be able to um, um, to be able to to to, to, interact. to interact with all of that. That's it, right. It, it, yeah, it's, and as you rightly point out, any, anybody can hit send and not really think enough about the consequences, be they a child or an adult. Um, what is certain is that we have seen, uh, put bullying aside for one second, more anxiety among young people during and since the pandemic, and uh, attention issues. A report out last week in France showed half of incoming middle students couldn't answer this math question, how many quarters, hours, go into three quarters of an hour? Mm. Uh, uh, and uh, half of the incoming students. And, you know, Gabriel Atanzu, I, I spoke to, uh, to a friend of mine who's a, who's a teacher, and he said the answer is simple, because they're not listening to the question because their minds are scattered. Oh, for sure. And Attention is it, spans are so is, short. Is it... Uh, uh, is it how bad is, is, is it? Can you blame it again on the digital age? I would end that conversation on a pessimistic note. I would hate myself for it, but I have to be. Let's be honest. Let's be truthful. When I came into the job, I came in with a lot of leftist ideals, which I still hold dear to my heart. But I came in thinking each and every kid can go to uni for sure. They can all achieve higher education. I don't think it anymore. I, I have totally changed my mind. Some kids need other uh, other perspectives. And, and I, I do think that's my experience over the past 15 years of doing the job at different levels the, with the elite and with the not quite the elite. And my impression is that, yes, it's harder to make them read. I sometimes read the lesson plans I was putting uh, in, in place years and years ago, and I'm amazed. I would never dare to give to my second, third year university students something that I gave to high schoolers 15 years ago or more or less that. So, uh, Philippe Cohen, the, uh, yeah. uh, the, the digital age is uh, making um, uh, attention spans shorter and making young people do nastier things? Which is why we try, like in the martial art, to reverse this trends that you describe, uh, Gabriel and Francois. So we have organized over the last four years uh, cyber eloquence, like uh, competitions, like debate competition, but using your cell phone. Uh, so we have organized it and, and we are continuously trying to improve this uh, uh, project, which we offer in schools and in, um, and in companies, by the way, for young um, workers. And it's called Respect Duels. So you have duelists, like in the old times, Except here, as a duelist, I have to sign up and to co-create the charter of what is the rule of the game. So it's a gamification approach, mm. which 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 is completely different from the Gabriel Attal approach, which is to increase the, the sanctions. Here it's for you know see how much fun you can have to debate, to convince, to be funny with your with your cell phone on social media, and battling on. Any, any, any topic that you can think about, which is exactly the, the contrary of censorship. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of ode to free speech. We should be able to convince the kids that they can debate about anything with respect as long as they uh, comply with the rules. And this is uh, you know, what we maybe we, we will want on France uh, 24, try to organize uh, you know, uh, broadcasted debates respect duels, because this is where we want to, to go to, which is to use the fact that they are spending their life on Twitch, on, 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 on all sorts of games, and the game can be a way to educate as well. So that's what we propose. Make it about inclusivity uh, instead of about uh, uh, excluding others. Uh, Philippe Cohen, we'll leave it there for now. Many thanks for joining us from London. I want to thank Zoe Moody for being with us uh, from Geneva. Gabriel Latanzio, so Louis-Victor de Francu. Thank you very Thank much. you for being with us here in the France 24 debate.